Hey folks, the Conjurer here doing another action figure review. I know today we're doing something a little bit more different than normal. It is a G.I. Joe figure and I have reviewed G.I. Joe stuff in the past. Well, technically it's a G.I. Joe figure, technically it's not. It is actually an Action Force figure from 2014. So this figure is 10 years old. And this was uh, bought for me by a buddy of mine in 2018. And I only received it a couple of days ago because, well, about a week ago because he had it aside for me. He was from the States. He picked it up at the Joe Con in 2018. So it has been sitting in his house for quite a long time. And he's only gotten around to, he's in the middle of moving from where he is to a different country. And he found this after it been sitting in his place for quite a while. So he managed to get it sent to me. And what this is, is a Space Force pilot from Action Force. So he's part of the Space Force line, but he's not an official figure. He was a custom made figure for the RO or C2014 exclusive, as you can see on the packaging. So what RO or C is, is Rollout Roll Call, which is the UK convention for Action Force. I'm not sure if it's still a thing. I believe it is. Um... But this was done from, if you look in the back of the box, this was made by Region Spoon Customs and Broken Arrows Toys. And then there's Legalese Raging Spoon. would like to thank Nathan Aviard, Eric Af, I uh, can't even pronounce it, Aran, George, all these people anyway. And uh, RagingSpoon.com. I don't know if any of these links are still working. I know Raging Spoon had done lots of stuff back in the day. I'm not sure if he's still doing stuff. Uh, this, as it says, this is Hot Jets. This is a fan-made adult collectible, not intended for children under 14. And then he has a kind of a bio card up the top for him. And I believe it is based on the old uh, Action Force Space Pilot. So it is supposed to be one of the characters from that era. It's just not an unofficial version of that one from that era. So he is quite a nicely done and uh, interesting put together figure. So you get a baggie with all his accessories. You get a jump pack, which is basically a red version of the jump jet pack from the G.I. Joe line. His main body parts are reused from different G.I. Joe figures. So the main body itself is from the Zap figure, I believe, was when these parts came out first. But done in greyish plastic. In fact, it kind of looks similar to the Dollar General uh, Duke that they put out. Or was it Grunt? I think it was Grunt. Kind of similar, that kind of off, kind of bluish grey. He has bright blue gloves. Because that was the kind of staple diet of all the um, Space Force. Their iconic colour scheme for Action Force in... The, back in the day was grey with bright orange bright blue and that was pretty much it the logo was similar to this sometimes it had the yellow or the orange lightning bolt through it but the the orange vest on this is quite nice i believe this was originally one of the renegades figures had a vest similar to this i want to say it's the duke figure from renegades and the head is a Again, I think it's a Deep Six version, or it could be Torpedo. So one of the divers, I believe, he reused the head for that to make this guy. Again, as I said, he's reused parts uh, to make this custom. And he comes with a cool little blue hamlet, which is a remade version of the classic G.I. Joe one with a visor. Again, back in the day, Action Force would have reused G.I. Joe parts. In fact, a lot of the O-ring figures from that line was a reuse of parts. Uh, I don't have any of them to hand. I did have Red Laser, which is one of the Red Shadows. The Red Shadow faction was the bad guys for these guys to fight. And their main adversaries in space would have been the Robo Skull. Which, if you're familiar with the recent, uh, recent version of it, has been reissued under new guys, but it's still kind of a Robo Skull with Red Wolf and Red. Re was it 
uh, Wild Weasel as a pilot, which looks really cool. Unfortunately, I haven't managed to get one of them. He does come with a small pistol. Again, the pistol is actually a reuse. I believe it's the Taser pistol from one of the more modern G.I. Joes. He comes with an Uzi, which again is a, in red plastic. A lot of the accessories for Space Force and even the uh, Q-Force, which was the seafaring guys, had the solid colored accessories. So you had bright blue accessories, bright yellow accessories, bright red accessories for the uh, figures. So hence why the jump pack is in red. I don't believe any of the jump packs had, or any of the Space Force had an actual jump pack, but this gives them a bit more interesting look. There was a couple of guys that were pilots for vehicles. There was four, three vehicles in the Space Force range. There was the Triad Fighter, which I do have, and I'm not sure where it is at the moment. There was the Space Cruiser, or the Cosmic Cruiser. Hey folks, just a quick, hopefully a quick edit to my Action Force Space Force Pilot exclusive figure. I did manage to dig out my old Cosmic Cruiser and I have him seated in it. Now, I don't think I've ever done a review of the Cosmic Cruiser or any of the old Action Force vehicles, even like the Robo Skull, but um, mine is missing a few bits. There should be antennae that go on the front here and there should be chin guns that go underneath. It does have like a spring landing gear thing so i'm not sure how that works but he has these accessories in behind him he does fit reasonably well you have to kind of squish him down a good bit to get him into this thing but the lid does close now the way this thing was designed you could des it was a one man or two man space pod so the idea was either you either have him sitting here or you can flip this down and they lay right across so I haven't tried him doing that way because he's. I wanted some place to put his accessories behind him. But if you have it this way, I'm assuming he can just lie right across and still have this closed down on top. One thing of note of the Space Cruiser, it's kind of an interesting few bits and bobs. These uh, cannons on the side are repurposed versions of the Ram Cycle ones. And these bits on the back, I believe these thrusters are actually reuse of the old Star Wars snow speeder. So... Like they did mm, mishmash parts together for some of the other vehicles. And in fact, some of the bigger vehicles have parts of like the red laser has or the Hal cannon has parts on different vehicles and stuff like that. It's interesting to note that. But just going to pop this in, which was a really cool looking spaceship. And then there was like a, a small single seating seated vehicle. So this guy has a blank gi joe it has the gi joe logo as opposed to action force logos on the stand but he does have that he has all the articulation of one of the modern 25th anniversary figures so this is what the body the uh, figure is based off so the arm can rotate around has a jo joint rain raises arm up that much single joint elbow with a swivel swivel in the wrist ball joint ahead as you saw he does have a diaphragm joint it's actually hidden behind his vest but there isn't a lower waist joint, it's just the diaphragm joint gives you that range of movement. His legs can kick forward, he has double jointed knees, which is a staple of the 25th anniversary. And uh, he has a single jointed L, um, ankle with a hinge. Uh, some of the later issue figures would introduce a mo more rocker or a hinged uh, wrist articulation. But that was way later after these guys came around. It was, would have been talking about 2019-ish. Maybe a little bit before that. Uh, some of the articula articulation changed. Some of the more modern ones now that they've been re reissuing out or issuing out have the rocker ankles as opposed to just the uh, swivel with a hinge. But unfortunately, I do not have any of my other G.I. Joe figures to hand of the similar nature. So what I will do is I will bring in some uh, Jurassic Park figures. So here's Ian Malcolm. I do have a Star Wars figure, which is the Death Star Gunner or the Imperial Gunner. Just for size comparison, we have Judge Hershey from the 2000 AD line. 
and I will bring in one of my predators from the Hyatoys line, which is the first version, I believe, of the Elder Predator. Unfortunately, his leg is a bit wobbly. He's very wobbly, actually. Let's see if we can st get him standing up. Because these guys can be a little bit finicky to stand. Come on, come on. Let's see if he can get you to stand. If not, you just have to leave you out. Uh, I don't think he wants to stand. Let's see if we can display his legs a little bit. Get him... There we go. So, you can just see the scale comparison between the different figures. It's not too bad. Again, I don't know how easily it obtainable these guys are, but it is interesting to see the Action Force line that was around back then. People had been doing customs for quite a while, and then this was a exclusive for the convention, so it wasn't too bad. Uh, a pickup, and along with this guy, I also picked up some extra, I think it was from the same seller, Raging Spoon, he did uh, Red Shadow Helmets that you could use on different bodies. I, I was intention, or intending to do a whole bunch of customs back in the day for the Red Shadows. Unfortunately, uh, as I've been waiting to get the parts, I probably haven't decided what I was going to use the thing, the thing those helmets for now. I probably will do some customs for them. There was four helmets, so I probably will do some customs just to have something on the go. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this quick video review of the Space Force pilot from the Rollout Roll Call 2014 exclusive for Action Force figure. Again, uh, I don't know where you can pick these guys up. They might pop up on eBay every now and again, and I do not know what sort of price range these go for. I can't even remember how much I paid for this one back in the day. It was, as I said, my buddy picked it up while he was at the convention. In fact, he picked up this those helmets and he also got me the python patrol rock viper tree pack which was part of that joe con exclusive set um the way joe con used to do the exclusives you had the main set of figures and then you had kind of subsets so you had like for the iron grenadiers you had the iron anvils uh extra figures and you had the i think you had what else was there there was the python patrol uh, laser vipers i think were separate to the main set and i think there was the python patrol rock vipers were separate to the main set you always do subsets anyway uh unfortunately since joe con is no longer a thing they don't do that anymore but hopefully that it might come back in some guys or another later in later down the line but for now this guy is pretty cool and he will be added to the shelf of other action force based figures and some of my other space force based customs so there you go guys i hope you enjoyed this video and as always please feel free to like comment and subscribe to my channel cheers guys